Hello everyone, it's going to be Lime back to you with another video. This video is an update pertaining to the missing child case of Zion Foster who went missing in January of last year after hanging out with her cousin Jalen Brazer who would later be sentenced to 23 months to four years in prison for one count of lying to an officer in a violent crime investigation. According to Jalen Brazer, he placed his cousin, Zion Foster, in a dumpster after she was unalive after they were allegedly smoking marijuana. I'm going to say this one more time. Jalen Brazer, who is the cousin of Zion Foster, placed his 17-year-old cousin in a dumpster after he claimed that she was unalive after they were quote unquote smoking weed. Since this revelation, search parties have been trying to find Zion Foster in these dumpsters yards. It has been confirmed by numerous outlets that Jalen Brazier has been released from prison after serving nine months. I'm going to say this one more time. Jalen Brazier, the cousin of Zion Foster, who went missing after hanging out with him has been released from prison after serving nine months and will be paroled into a boot camp. Sierra Milton, the mother of Zion Foster, stated in part, I'm disappointed. And it's basically like a slap in the face, especially for him to admit to a lot of what he did. And it to be reported on national TV, recorded in court, and he didn't even get the 23 months. This feels like a failure in the system. It doesn't make any sense. Miss Milton was not even informed of this new development. It's bad enough, Miss Milton had to suffer not seeing her daughter graduate from high school. It's bad enough Miss Milton's other children have to suffer without seeing their eldest sibling during the holiday season. And for the judge to take it upon themselves to deny this 17 year old child is an injustice beyond words. This man, Jalen Brazier, is not only a danger to Zion Foster's mother, Sierra Milton, not only a danger to Zion Foster's siblings, but this man is a danger to the community and the state of Michigan as a whole. If this man can unalive his own cousin without hesitation and to deny Sierra Milton and Zion Foster's siblings a sense of closing a chapter of finding their sibling and child screams that this man is a true monster and anyone that condones this type of foolishness I want you to understand if he can violate his own cousin he will not hesitate to violating you or your own child or children when he sees fit I need persons to understand how dangerous this person is 
and how dangerous they are to the community as a whole. If you can discard your cousin in trash, allegedly, what won't you do to someone else's child down the road? Now you will watch this brief news clip and I will be back with more commentary. For those who successfully completed. This is absurd, it's unfair, and it's not just. Sierra Milton is reeling over the release of Jalen Brazier, who's likely the last person to see her daughter alive. Brazier was released from prison Tuesday, nine months after he was sentenced for lying to investigators about Zion Foster's disappearance. Why is this man free? What? I can admit to this and still be let free. Zion went missing after leaving home in East Point to visit Brazier, who's her cousin, in Detroit last January. As friends, family, and police searched for her, Brazier told East Point investigators he did not know where she was or what happened to her. He later admitted to putting her body in a dumpster and claimed she stopped breathing while they were smoking marijuana. I was on panic mode. Ever since that happened, her mom at one point talked to me and I couldn't bring myself to like, your daughter just died. What do I do? Brazier was sentenced to 23 months to four years in prison for lying to police, but ended up spending nine months behind bars. His early release, the result of a 90-day special alternative incarceration program, which Macomb County Judge Edward Servito approved. That boggles my mind for the judge to give an, a, a more aggressive term because of hearing the case and finding out what Jalen said he did. It could be signed off and I not be notified. A group of Detroit police officers dedicated their entire summer to searching for Zion's body in a Macomb County landfill, but never found her. Chief White says DPD's investigation is not over. That case is, is still wide open. Um, we think we've got a strong suspect for that case. Our detectives are constitutionally doing everything they can to talk to him, investigate him, visit with him. Um, to make sure that we get what we need to, to charge that case the way it needs to be charged. In the meantime, no body means no determination as to how Foster died and no closure for a mother still mourning and still desperate for answers. What I want is I want justice. I want him to pay and I want the truth to come out. There's still so many unanswered questions for Sierra Milton. We were unable to get in contact with Jalen Brazier or the Macomb County judge who presided over his case. But as you heard from Detroit Police Chief James White, this is something they're still very much looking into. This story is tragic on so many levels. This child lost her life at the hands of someone whom she trusted. Not only did Jalen Brazier violate the trust of his cousin, but he violated the trust of Zion Foster's mother, Sierra Milton. Zion Foster's unfortunate disappearance slash unaliving is tragic because we will never know what Zion Foster could have been because someone whom she trusted, whom the family trusted, took it upon themselves to doing the ultimate betrayal, which was violating a relative. In addition, the system which was supposed to seek justice for Zion Foster and her family ultimately denied this 17 year old a chance of justice. How many 
of these tragic stories must we see before we listen. Approximately 90,000 plus black girls and black women are currently missing. And it is the attitude and biases of persons who are supposed to seek justice. It is the attitude of mainstream media. It is the attitude of society which continues to failing our people in the process. I've said this before and I will say it again. If we treat missing persons cases as criminal cases, we will see a dramatic shift in the attitudes towards missing persons cases, particularly when it comes to black people as these cases come forward. In addition, we must be mindful of not spreading misinformation and disinformation about missing persons cases as it does have a negative effect, not only on the ongoing investigation, but it affects the families and loved ones of missing persons. We claim we listen but we continue to denying black children and we continue to denying black women. When will we finally listen? I will leave in the comments and description below for organizations and hotlines as it pertains to missing persons, protect black children, known and unknown, justice, for Zion Foster, find our people. Please be safe out here and I will see you in the next video.